Hey, what's going on everyone? I appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to be sharing with y'all a useful build that I think you guys are going to enjoy. I don't really expect this video to get a lot of views, but I figured I'd make this just because it's been incredibly useful with my character and I figured it would help other players out as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. If you do find this enjoyable, by the way, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like on it. First things first, I'm going to be getting into the perk cards and then I'll get into the armor and the weapon that I recommend using with this build. So yeah, as you can see, here is my setup. I got 15 in strength, three in perception, three in endurance, 13 in charisma, six in two intelligence, seven in two agility, and 11 into luck. In strength, I got the heavy gunner perk cards. So master heavy gunner, heavy gunner, and expert heavy gunner. I max these out to gain an additional 60% total damage with all three of these perk cards. You get 20% extra damage with each of these perk cards. And I also have bullet shield. You gain 60 damage resistance while firing a heavy gun. This is an important perk card to be using with this build. And also I got lock and load. Heavy guns reload 30% faster. So yeah, keep that in mind. This is a heavy gun build and you're going to be a tank when using this. It's like you're invincible with this build, seriously. You can tank so much. Anyways, in perception, I got the lock picking skills just in case I wanna run a silo or something and launch a nuke. I put three in perception, so I have each of the lock picking skills to get through the silo. Also, I got three into fireproof. This makes it so you take 45% less damage from explosions and flame attacks, such as like if you're getting attacked from a scorch beast. This can be pretty handy for defense against a scorch beast. And charisma, I got three into inspirational, so I gain more experience while on a team. I got one into strange in numbers. This makes it so positive mutation effects are 25% stronger if teammates are mutated too. And I got three into team medic. This makes it so your stem packs also heal nearby teammates for their full strength. So not only are you a tank, but you're also a healer for your team too. This is a very beneficial build to be using with a team as well. You're gonna be a beneficial player for your team. Also, I got Tenderizer maxed out here. This makes it so your target will receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. And lastly, I have Friendly Fire maxed out. Teammates hit by your flame weapons regenerate even more health. So yeah, that's another thing. You're gonna be using a flamethrower with this build and I'll be showing you the specific flamethrower that I recommend trying to get your hands on. You can actually get it from any event. I'll show you that after I get through all these perk cards. Anyways, next up here, I maxed out first aid. This makes it so your stem packs will restore 45% more lost health. This will make it so you can keep your health up even more and you'll be benefiting other players too since you got team medic as well. So when you use a stem pack, it's really gonna be helping out your whole team, not just you. Also, I got batteries included maxed out as well. This makes it so your energy weapon ammo weighs 90% less. And in case you don't know, fuel for your flamethrower is considered energy ammunition. So yeah, this is beneficial to have. So you're not carrying as much, so you can carry more fuel. Anyways, next up here, uh, for agility, I put two in evasive. Each agility point adds plus two resistance to damage and energy. So this makes it so you could take a little bit more damage. Also, I put five points into adrenaline. I got this maxed out. As you can see here, this makes it so you gain plus 10% and you can get a max of 60% extra damage for 30 seconds per kill. Duration refreshes with kills. So yeah, you can gain an additional 60% extra damage while you're taking out enemies with adrenaline. Also up next here is luck. I put 11 into this. I maxed out bloody mess. This makes it so you gain 15% extra bonus damage and enemies will sometimes explode into a gory red paste. Anyways, next up here is one gun army. Heavy guns gain a 12% stagger chance and a 12% chance to cripple a limb, which this is just beneficial for heavy guns. Definitely recommend this perk card. Also, I got Serendipity. This makes it so while below 30% health, you gain a 45% chance to avoid damage. Just in case your health does get lower, this will come in handy for you to survive. And lastly, I maxed out Starch Genes. You will never mutate from rads, and right away will never cure mutations. So you can keep your mutations. Now, let's go ahead and get into the weapon that I recommend getting for this build. And that is the Holy Fire. As you can see here, this is the effects that the Holy Fire comes with. It comes with the Vampire effect. You restore 2% health over 2 seconds when you hit a target. 
Also, it has 25% weapon speed and it breaks 50% slower. This is definitely a great flamethrower to get your hands on and especially if you're using the perk cards that I just shared with you all. And in case you're wondering how you get the Holy Fire, you can be rewarded this potentially from one of the new events that's called Beast of Burden, as you can see. That's how you get your hands on this, which, speaking of this, I need to actually repair it. <laughs> it's looking a little damaged there. Next up here is the armor. This is what I'm rocking for my armor. Now, you don't have to necessarily have this same armor, but as you can see, I got a full Vanguard's Brotherhood of Steel Deep Pocketed set. And in case you don't know what Vanguard's does, it makes it so you have higher energy and damage resistance the higher your health is. And this build, you're going to typically have higher health because of the vampire effect on the flamethrower. And your stem packs are going to be healing even more too. So, yeah, you're typically going to be having higher health. The other important effect that I recommend trying to find with the Vanguard set is 75% chance to reduce damage by 15% while not moving. As you can see, this is actually on all of my pieces. 75% chance to reduce damage by 15% while not moving. Yeah, it's on every single piece that I got. Keep in mind, this isn't a necessary thing with this build, but it is a beneficial armor set to be on the lookout for if you are trying to rock this build, just because you are going to be typically full health with this build. But sometimes you will get lower. That's why I have the Serendipity perk card, just to help out with surviving if you do get lower health anyways as for my mutations that i got i gotta say i don't have my mutations properly set up but these are the mutations that i got i have chameleon egghead grounded herbivore marsupial scaly skin speed demon and unstable isotope the one mutation that i had that i recommend definitely not getting is grounded i really got to properly set these up still but yeah you definitely don't want grounded with this build because it makes it so your energy gun damage will do 50% less damage and yeah flamethrowers do energy damage so so definitely avoid getting the grounded mutation like I mentioned before I'm still properly trying to set these up but uh, yeah that's the mutations that I do have once again don't have the grounded mutation with this build currently I unfortunately have it anyways now let's go ahead and get into the gameplay um, I'm just gonna go ahead and teleport over to the White Spring Resort, I guess, since there are a ton of ghouls over here at the golf club. And I'll also show you some other things that this build can be useful for as well, besides just taking out tons of enemies with ease without taking much damage whatsoever. I'm just gonna go ahead and gather up a bunch of ghouls and just show you how tanky you are with this build. It's seriously like you're invincible with this. I had to share this with the community just because it is an extremely beneficial build. So yeah, I got a bunch of ghouls now on my butt. Let's go ahead and just show it off. Come on guys, get closer. Alright, here we go. You just hold down the fire button and your health is going to stay up. They don't stand a chance. Attack me, y'all. Come on. Yeah, not a chance. They are doing a bit of radiation damage to me. That's the only thing. But, yeah, as you can see, my health is staying up. Just the radiation is getting to me a little bit. But as long as you're holding down that fire button, you will live. <laughs> and keep in mind, I do have the grounded mutation currently, so I am doing less damage as well. 50% less damage. So, yeah, you'll be doing more damage than what you're seeing currently in this gameplay. As long as you don't have that mutation, like I do. I gotta get rid of that radiation. My goodness. Boom. Only thing that really got me was the radiation. But as you saw, my health did stay up. Just the radiation started to make my health go lower. But uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, whoop. there's another ghoul. Hello. Bang. Oh, another one. Why not? You gotta love the holy fire blue flame too. I'm gonna go ahead and get the fuel from these guys. They should drop plenty of fuel. Anyways, <laughs> another thing that's beneficial about this build is when you have the friendly fire perk card, 
as I showed you previously, uh, Friendly Fire makes it so your flames will heal your allies, but it'll also heal NPCs too. And sometimes there's events where you have to keep the NPC allies alive, such as, for example, Test Your Metal. It's beneficial, you know, to keep all of your allies alive. And as you can see, you can heal them during Test Your Metal. So this is an easy way to keep them alive too. The flame heals them quite a bit with each. You don't have to like use a lot of fuel too to get them back full health. Very beneficial. Like I said before, this is a great uh, team build too. Not just a solo build. I mean, it is a great solo build too. You are able to tank enemies with these, but it's a beneficial build for team play too. So yeah, keep that in mind. Also, uh, another great example of this build in action is against the Imposter Sheep Squatch. You can run the pylons with ease. In case you don't know, while you are running the pylons, you do take quite a bit of damage, but as long as you're holding down that fire button and keeping the flame active on enemies, you're going to keep your health up. And not to mention your stem packs are going to be healing quite a bit too. So if you do take a little bit too much damage, you can just use some stems to get your health back up to full easily, as you can see running two pylons on this one and yeah kept my health up pretty easily and took out the imposter sheep squatch so you are a vip player for the imposter sheep squatch event too i mean heck with this build in general you're going to be a vip player you're going to be extremely beneficial for your team um but yeah that's a little bit of this build in action hopefully you all decide to use this it is a great build. I'm going to be rocking this one for a while now on my main character. I absolutely love this one. Keep in mind you can switch up the perk cards if you don't if you don't like exactly what I got going on with my perk cards. But it's been working out for me, so it should benefit you too. But yeah, I guess that's wrapping up this video. I guess this is a good enough taste of this build in action. Hope you all found this enjoyable and you decide to use it for your character too. I got to say, it is a great one. I'm absolutely loving this one. But yeah, I'm out of here, everyone. Like I mentioned before in the beginning of this video, I don't really see this video getting a lot of views, but I figured the players that do end up watching this, it is going to help out tremendously. I'm out of here, though, everyone. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.